Welcome everybody to another edition of W2005 here in TW2020 as we're continuing on the road Halloween half here on Nitro live from Laramie, West Virginia as we have a basically sold out crowd of a little under 15,000 people and we're starting off with a big match. As was set up last week, Alex Wright and Tajiri are teaming up to take on Yang and Kaz and this is a wild like you know basically the show starts off with everybody already fighting in the ring and the match goes on you know Wright gets a spot in some you know big suplexes clotheslines taking you know uh Yang and Kaz down for uh submissions Jerry comes in with his kicks but eventually um basically what happens here is at the end like you know it's a back and forth match you know Kaz getting his kicks in we get a fun little spot with Kaz and Terry basically trying to kick each other's head off but in the end uh you know they're wild you know wild fight and things uh Stacy you know sort of distracts that's just long enough for uh Kaz to get out of the way Jerry to wipe out Alex Wright uh Kaz takes out Jerry Yang goes up top hits the Yang time not the Michigan good driver and gets a pinball victory over Alex Wright as this gets an 81 overall Tajiri gets in 68 Wright gets a 76 Yang gets a 61 Kaz gets an 89, and Nikio get another win, and are truly set up to be the normal contenders. And post match, like you know, Nikio leave to the booze of the crowd. You know, Tajiri gets up, makes emotions to write, you know, sorry. Right, you know, walks away. Tajiri like has to turn around to explain things, and then, well, Alex Wright wallops right from Tajiri from behind, and then he gets a chair in the ring. He picks it up and drills Tajiri with a jumping DDT right on the chair. And yep, we have a heel turn. So there we go, 69, and his Das Greatest Gimmick gets the grading very good. Charisma versus Matched Angle, Psychology versus Matches, and receive a bonus when looking dominant. Fun stuff. So big moment here, as yeah, I don't care, I don't care. Like, this gets a 69, like, you know, been quasi built up, but not really, because I didn't like set the heel turn because I wanted it to be like a shock heel turn in the sense like it finally happened but like I didn't want to be like subtly set up like people may have like been thinking he's going to turn heel but you know maybe not but here we are right it's now a heel he turned on to Jiri and yep you know here we go time for that feud to continue let's get to 69 as we move forward as we you know basically get the announcers hyping up a big six game main event as Goldberg, Shauna Hare, and US Champion of the Truth will team up to take on Chuck Palumbo, our WWE World Champion. Mike Awesome and Eddie Guerrero in a huge six man match. Uh, this gets 69 just because it's graphic. And we go backstage. Where all the heels are backstage and they get 100 because they're great. Uh, basically, you know, this is just, you know, Mike Awesome pacing. You know, says he's going to crush the truth. Uh, you know, and Eddie's saying, tonight, once again, trying to hear, you're going to be reminded why I'm the top of this company. And Guerrero found values means I'm going to give you an ass kicking. Because every time we've gotten in the ring, you've gotten lucky, but your luck is about to run out. And Plumbo steps in and says, Tonight, Goldberg, you're the number one contender. And that's fine by me. Because that just means that Halloween Havoc, I could just show everybody why I'm the leader of the revolution, why I am the rising star in this company, and why I'm the future of this company. Nobody else is. Because this is Chuck Plumbo's world, and you're just living in it. You know, heels, you know, heels get to be acting like heels. As we move forward, you know, this gets 100. And there we go, just for setting things up for the big six man later tonight. And then we have our um, Christmas title match. Of course, this is between two heels, so that also gets a hit. Uh, match cooled the crowd a little. Uh, still appreciating the pre show. I mean, again, I just need to throw these guys in matches with um, higher rated workers, but you know, it's what it is. Um, so, Reckless Roberts, Austin Aries, and this is basically just like sort of a fun little heel versus heel match as they're just like trying to screw each other over like you know low blows taking each other down using the ropes uh Tracy Roberts getting involved you know Austin Aries you know sort of like you know pushing away from her uh Reckless Roberts then taking advantage and eventually Austin Aries looks like he has the win after hitting the brain buster and going up top but Ro but uh, Tracy shakes the ropes as he's getting up top that allows Roberts to take advantage hit a quick top rope DDT and then hit a sort of like a modified suplex um and using the ropes for leverage and gets a pinball victory over Austin Aries to retain the Cruiserweight title. He makes defense number three. This gets a 48. Uh, Aries gets a 58. Roberts gets a 62. Uh, yeah, good stuff. Again, I knew this was going to be ding for heel versus heel, but it's been built up this way. And yeah, uh, fun stuff. And sort of like, I don't say ends the feud here, but sort of like, you know, solidifies Roberts as a Cruiserweight champion. And then post-match, as Roberts and Tracy celebrating, 
in comes Romeo, and he had nails, like, he basically turns around Roberts, hits him with a quick sort of, like, uh, cutter, and walks away, pointing at the title, pointing at Tracy, and walking away as the answer's put over. Of course, Romeo was helping out Rokas Roberts after he and Tracy had an interesting fun together. Um, but now that seems to be over after they got upset, and now Romeo is, seems to be a man on his own. Uh, this gets a 45. Fun stuff is sort of setting up Robert's next challenger as we try to make something out of the Cruiserweight division. <laughs> um, but yeah, 45, not bad as we move forward. And then we go backstage where Jerry Barash as catch up, caught up with Alex Wright. And, you know, Barash basically asked Wright what the hell, you know, was that? And Alex Wright explains, for months, no, for years, I've had to tell people who I, sh who I should be friends with, who I should be teaming with, who I should let manage me. But now I'm on my own. For once and for all, everybody will see the true greatness of Alex Wright, the greatest European wrestler on earth. And anybody in its way will have to face the wrath of the greatest wrestler, Alex Wright. And, or, and then Wright walks away as this gets 71. Good stuff. Again, fun little as we're going to build up Wright and sort of the main part of the show tonight. And then we have a quick little um, segment where the Hardys. Um, you know, are cutting a backstage promo, basically saying, you know, they'll face whoever, uh, you know, Eric Bischoff puts in front of them at Halloween Havoc. They don't care, you know, if they faced Minkato before, they can beat him again. Um, you know, they're glad to face whoever, no, wait, they haven't faced Minkato. You know, if is put in front of them, they're, they're proud to put this house up against anybody because they want to prove that they're the greatest tag team in the world today and they're going to face the greatest competition in the world today. It doesn't matter who they who'd face, they'll be hit with a swanton ball. So, good stuff. Simple little babyface promo from the Hardys as this gets an 80 and sort of like moves things work with them. Jeff rambles a bit, you know, because he rolled badly on the improvised dialogue part. And then we have a interesting little tag match as the Lakers of Sin uh, take on Evolution. And this is like working up to be a fun little like wild tag match as Rothschild and Killswitch sort of like throw around both guys, but Lashley and Claudio are you know, fighting bit by bit. As youngsters put over that, you know, Eric Bischoff once, you know, wanted to, you know, that they wanted to have the Seekers of Sin face an actual competition outside of their current feud with the Nest. And this looks like to be, you know, it's a fun little tag match, you know, Lashley hitting some suplexes, Seekers of Sin doing some brawling take advantage. Uh, and But then eventually what happens is uh, Raven and Macias come down to the ringside and they actually attack both teams, just sort of like get the match thrown out. And then of course they focus their attack on the Seekers of Sin as Riff calls for the bell. And Revolution sort of just gets out of the way. Like, this is not their problem. And Flair, Claudio, and Lashley all sort of sneak away as the fight continues. So this gets a 58. Uh, honestly, again, don't book a match you don't have to finish you. But this sort of, like, continues the feud while not having to put, you know, job seekers this in, make them look like total jobbers, and doesn't drop Evolution to a team that sort of, like, are, you know, henchmen. Uh, this gets a 58. Not terrible. Kill Switch gets a 67. Rough Shout gets a 58 as is Claudio, ironically, and Blasher Lashley slowly getting there with a 33. Um, and then the fight just basically continues. Like, you know, Macias actually grabs Rothschild and goes for the uh, big sort of like Crucifix powerbomb, but Kai Graves comes in, spears Macias, that begins the fight with them. Um, out comes Morningstar to sort of help his troops. That leads Raven and uh, Raven to come out, and they fight, and everybody gets involved for WWE officials try to break things apart. But we get a brawl up to the stage. Um, Kill Switch and Last Child uh, trying to take out Prophet, but um, he is coming in after throwing uh, Kai Graves into the ringside area, and the ball just continues the fight uh, until we go to commercial. As the announcers put over, something has to end this battle, has to end this war of darkness. At which this gets a 75 as we move forward, and fun stuff. And then we have a fun little backstage promo as the truth cuts a wrap on Mike Awesome. On Eddie and and Palumbo, something about you know Eddie being continually upset with her hair, something about you know beating Awesome's ass and you'll do it again. Again, I don't write reps, I don't try to, but it's the truth. You know what he says here, and her acceptance says, Palumbo, we've been partners, we've been opponents, but just stay out of my way because I'm focused on Guerrero and proving I am the top of this top of this company, and I'll kick Eddie's ass once again to remind him of that. And then Goldberg up and says, Plumbo, at Havoc, you're next. And tonight's just going to be a preview of what's going to happen to you. So, 95, good promo. Of course, these guys are just really over. And yeah, fun stuff. Like, nothing special here um, as we continue on Nitro. 
And then, wow, okay. This, oh, right, okay. So this is interesting. Um, so uh, Jeff Jarrett, like, you know, Jared Boras is backstage with the um, Chosen View. You know, Boras asked Jared about the challenge from Brother Ray last week, and Jared says, look here, slap nuts. If Brother Ray wants to get in the ring, in a cage with me, I'm fine with that, because he has to realize. I was fighting in cages when he was still doing whatever he does on the streets. I was battling cages when I was 19 years old, barely out of wrestling training school with legends like Lawler and others in front of thousands of people in Memphis. So Brother Ray, you think just because you fought a few hardcore matches, you've gone through some tables, that you can win a cage match? Well, Slap Nuts, you got another thing coming because I am the leader of the chosen few and together we will destroy you once and for all. And then in walks your TV champion, Ken Anderson. And Jarrett's like, what the hell? And Anderson's like, yeah, look, um, I'm looking for Bischoff's office. Like, you know, I'm a television champion. I've been over on Revolution last two weeks, kicking ass and taking names. But, you know, kind of reminded this is a belt for both shows. So want to find Bischoff? And Jarrett's like, but who the hell are you? Why are you interrupting my time? And Anderson's like, well, I saw three dorks. I figured they meant no reason. And... It's like, no, you don't understand. These are the chosen few. This is Magnificent Mark Jindrak and simply Johnny Devine. And they could take that TV title off you in three seconds if I deemed it so. Anderson's, well, they're working to try, man. But I'm an ass kicker. If I'm about to kick your ass, your ass, or your ass. He points at all three men and the men walk away. And looks like we have a bit, little bit of a possible feud, or maybe just Anderson being Anderson. Anyway, Jeff's like, no. Anyway, by the way, talk to Bischoff. Cage match, Havoc, let's do it. 100, good stuff, building up Anderson, building up Chosen Few, building up the big match for Halloween Havoc. And then we have a great Suzuki in the ring as Prince Jose and Luke Skipper comes out and Prince Jose says, Suzuki, I know you're a man who enjoys the finer things in life. So if you just walk away tonight, I know many fine women who offer you great pleasure if you just let my man Alex Skipper get the victory. And Suzuki looks like he's thinking about it, and then he uh, hits Skipper with a dropkick to begin the match. Um, that's a, a reference to if Suzuki had some interesting off out of the ring side jobs when he was working in Minjimoku Pro around this time. It's just, anyway, uh, while well, he was still a senator, I think, or at least a state senator, however that works in Japan, anyway. 48, we have our fun little um, cruiserweight match. This only gets a 49 because of the pre show gimmick. Uh, but oh, also they didn't click, which is unfortunate. Uh, but still, back and forth match. Maybe there's some botches just because they don't click. But eventually, if Skipper hits the overdrive on Great Suzuki and gets a pinfall victory right here on Nitro to get a big victory for him, Mose. Uh, Skipper gets a 56, Suzuki gets a 59. And again, um, I would push Suzuki more, but he doesn't work Sundays, at least for me. So there's no use to having him around. Like, I'll have him around basically as a like cruiserweight job guy and like because he's a deep, good worker. But that's about it, what I can really do for him. Anyway, this gets a 49, and the heel so right after it's to a 48. As again, these are two other guys who I should throw in some more top tier matches just to hopefully get them past that um, like unimportant barrier. Anyway, moving forward. Um, Alex Wright is still backstage, and Chavagro walks up and says, Alex, what the hell was that? Look, I, I still wasn't cleared, but I thought you and Dejiri could do that, but what? What the hell, man? And Wright says, look, Chavo, let me be on my own. Walk away, and we'll just consider our partnership done and finished, and that's move on like two men. And Chavo's like, no, man, look, I want answers. And Alex Wright is for a struggle, and then just punches Chavo, leaving him laying, and walking away once again. As it gets 69, and Wright is just full-blown heel now, and also getting better as a gimmick, which is good. And then we have an in-ring here as Randy Savage comes down with Don Fry and Savage like, well, 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 Don Fry, I mean, sorry, Canyon, you want to get in our face? Talk about being better than everyone? I'm the macho man. And when I wanted somebody to get behind in this business, I chose this man because he's a menace. He causes mayhem. He's a predator of the highest order. He's Don Fry and he's going to rip and tear you apart, Canyon sooner than you think. So, But tonight, I'm gonna give him a little taste of what he's going to do to you. So, get that lamb to the slaughter that I found, and Kagan, you better watch 
His brother, oh yeah, you better dig what's gonna happen to you sooner or later. 77, decent promo as it's a little short as we move forward to the actual match, which is Don Fry killing Reno in like four minutes. Unfortunately, this only got to 43. I'm guessing because it was really short. Oh, I forgot that storyline. I'm a moron. Oh, well. Yeah, no heat. I forgot that storyline. Not the end of the world. Um, probably our worst match in a while, honestly, at least on TV. Um, but yeah, Don Fry, like, this is just like Fry killing Reno. Like, you know, looks impressive because Reno's a big guy, but Fry just destroys him, locks him in submission, and gets hold in four minutes and keeps it on. Uh, Reno gets a 57, Fry gets a 67, and then post match. Fry keeps the hold on and is getting the beat down until Kanan comes in and the fight is on. Savage tries to get involved. Kanan like brawls with him a little. Like, you know, Savage doesn't actually take a bump because he can't. But eventually Fry attacks from behind, but Kanan is ready for him. Boom, Kanan Cutter wipes out Don Fry. Kanan rolls out to the ring, points at both men, and it seems the feud is continuing. Fun stuff, you know, as just, you know, not the most, like, in, like you know, biggest angle here. But let's continue on the angle as it seems like these two men will be facing off sooner than later. Then we have a Revolution recap focusing on the main event of Revolution, which is Palumbo and Monty Brown taking on AJ Styles and Paul London. Let's get 71, and it's time for our main event. Okay, 87. So open maybe for 90, but you know, with Truth and Awesome involved, you know, kind of a slightly disappointing, but fun stuff, and also O'Hare's O'Hare. But anyway, I mean, this is your very classic 16 match. Like every little feud gets their highlight here. You know, Goldberg and Palumbo basically, you know, not much is basically, you know, Goldberg hits a spear, but if, but A comes in right away to fight him. Uh, Palumbo later on, you know, hits a big sort of like, you know, uh, over the shoulder backbreaker and even maybe go hit, go, goes for the full throttle on Goldberg. But Truth's come in to break it up. You know, then we've got Truth and Awesome fighting. You know, Awesome going for a Awesome bomb, but Truth got out of it. Truth, going for, Truth are consequences, but Awesome is giving too big. Get them fighting to the outside. Eddie O'Hare, O'Hare facing off, you know, big same stuff. Big boot, you know, power slam, going for the Widowmaker, but Eddie turning a DDT, um, hitting the three Migos, going for the Brain Buster, but O'Hare blocking it. Uh, Eddie eventually the Blue Thunder Bomb on the truth, and tagging in Awesome to do the dirty work. Uh, fighting continue. Uh, Goldberg, you know, fighting and hitting spears on all the heels, uh, going for a jackhammer on Awesome once again, but Palumbo fighting with him yeah, eventually. And eventually things break down. It's a six way fight. And Awesome is able to pick up Truth, drop him with the Awesome Bomb right in the middle of the ring and get the pinball victory over the man who took the US title off him. Like I said, this gets an 87. Truth gets an 80. O'Hare gets an 81. Goldberg gets a 93. Awesome gets an 89. Palumbo gets an 86. Eddie gets a 94. Fun stuff overall for an 87. And eventually the fighting continues. And, you know, Palumbo and Goldberg go after each other, you know, continuing the fight before the officials try to break it apart. Eddie breaks, I mean, Goldberg breaks out, goes after Palumbo. Palumbo breaks out, goes after Goldberg. Eventually, Goldberg, you know, goes for a spear, but Palumbo gets out of the way. And then they just face off as we, you know, the announcers hype up the match continuing. And this gets a 91. And overall, as a show, this gets us a 90. So about what I figured. You know, not our, you know, fun little show there. Um, you know, it's... What we're looking for here. Yeah, just, you know, that, that six fan was probably not, like, our highest tier main event there, but, like, it is what it is. Building up all the other little fun storylines and continuing on as we move forward, you know, forward into the next step here. And let's just see what Raw did as we go forward. Hey, it's some guy. And, yeah, but the big thing there is probably, like, right turn heel. Uh, and, I mean, obviously this, I think, sort of a blind man could tell what was eventually going to happen. But this allows right to be built up and going there. Uh, let's see here. Any mail? Oh, right. Okay, so Raw had a uh, random one's tag match. Rick Steiner defeated Ron Waterman. CM Punk defeated Seaman in 85. Sure. Skyfall K. Lyon defeated Grandmaster Sexy in 77. Vampiro defeated Charlie Haas in 75. DP and the APA defeated Finley and TNA in 87. And Random Man Event, which got a 99. Of Kurt Angle Edge defeated Big Show and Jericho in a cage match, which got an 85 overall. They got a 2.97 for their show. We got a 2.74. So it's getting there. Close there. Um, But yeah. And Josh Mann is doing an MMA fight. Yay for him. Um, but anyway, I'll be back in just a moment with Revolution. All right, and it's now time for Revolution, and honestly, we got kind of a wacky show going on here. Um, I'll be honest, this is 
This is a very mid 2000s like sort of TV show. Um, you'll see. Anyway, announcers put over. It'll be a big tag match main event tonight as former enemies Trisha Sky and Joni Aller will team up to take on European Disunion in our main event, which gets a 69. And then we're sent to the ring for our first of three, count them, three women's matches tonight. Um, honestly, this is more because my male angles aren't quite ready for the big matches yet as opposed to anything else. Um, but anyway, moving on. We've got Gil Kim starting things off, defeating Ronnie Jonah in a little over seven minutes. Um, it says with a reverse diamond dust, but that's sort of a big move for this. So it's, she just hits the defeat. Uh, gets a 70, Gail Kim gets a 79, Ronnie Jonah gets a 48. Um, honestly, this is just a match sort of the recenter Gail Kim as a like top tier, like, you know, contender. She's been sort of out of it in the little feud with Cartier and Alexander. And this is just a big win to get her a win on TV and, you know, rank people. Hey, she's Gail Kim, former women's champion. She's pretty good. And post match, she celebrates to a 74 as the answers put over her, you know, rising back up in the women's division. Then we go backstage where Sunny Siaki walks up to Monty Brown and he says, Sunny Siaki is proud to tell you, Monty Brown, that Sunny Siaki is going to team up with you tonight and we're going to kick the ass of Paul London and Dean Malenko and everyone will see the glory of Sunny Siaki and Monty Brown together showing our greatness tonight. And Monty Brown's just sort of like, look kid, you stand beside us, I'll pound some people, you pick up what I leave laying. That's it. Okay. And Siaki says Siaki is proud to fight beside you. And Monty Brown is not amused. So it's just a little promo to put over that Sasaki and Monty are teaming up later tonight as this gets a 71. And then we cut backstage. Uh, well, we, you know, cut to where Rey Mysterio Jr. is leaving uh, Teddy Long's office. And he walks into Ravid and Paul Heyman. RVD says, Ray says, I wish I would say good to see you, Rob, but come on, man. You know Heyman. He's, he's nothing more than a, and Hamilton says, what are you saying? Ray, you should remember that I brought you into prominence in North American wrestling. You do not have this job. You don't have this former championship. You do not have your great house, great big house in San Diego right now. If I did not give you a chance in front of the ECW crowd, but that's fine. You can walk away. And me and my client, Rob Van Dam, the number one wrestler in the business today, will talk to you along about what we deserve. And Ray's like, Paul, I would have been fine without you. Look, I got up there and I made my way. Yeah, you gave me a door to walk into, but I went up there and I proved myself with the ECW fans and now the WCW fans. So much so that I got finished talking to Teddy and next week on Revolution, I'm getting a world title shot against Palumbo getting a rematch because obviously the way it worked out on Fall Row was a little weird and he thinks I get, should get one more shot against Palumbo. And actually this leads to Van Damme you know, says, it, wait, 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 right? You had your little miracle run, you won the title and now you're getting in my way again? I'm Rob Van Dam. I should be the man getting title shots here on Revolution, not you. And he says, hey, talk to Teddy, walks away and Heyman turns to Van Damme says, Rob, don't worry. I'll talk to Teddy Long and we'll get this all straightened out. You should be the man here on Revolution, not him, okay? I'm your advocate and I'll get this going. So that gets an 85, sort of setting things up and you know, sort of uh, referring back to their, you know, team up and now RVD's heel and with Heyman and, you know, Ray doesn't trust him because he has a memory of what Heyman's actually like and all the fun stuff, this gets an 85, good stuff. And then we, have a fun little stuff here as we have um, Trevor Slater and Miracle Just Wanted taking on the team of Rodown Chris Roxy, Ryan Taylor, and Bobby Fish. And this is a pure squash match. Like, this is a match just, hey, remember, AW is great. They have a buddy in the form of Trevor Slater. And Slater just sort of gets most of the in ring time and eventually gets the sweet and sour to get the pinfall victory. Uh, this gets a 37 because these are, you know, complete jobbers outside of Roxy. Uh, Harris gets a 77. Storm gets an 82. Trevor Slater gets a 50. Uh, Bobby Fish gets a 7. Ryan Taylor gets a 25. Chris Roxy gets a um, 54, and yeah, I mean, this is just a match. And then, you know, post-match, they're celebrating, and, you know, they start to take to Mike and says, you know, tonight, AMW, we're going to celebrate Trevor winning tonight by going to a party, in, and throw down, you know, at a party, let's fall up and come with us. Roxy sort of shrugs and walks away with them, and it's like they're all going out to party, as it gets a 59. Again, fun little wacky angle. A win to get some momentum for Slater and AW after they lost a tag title match and moving on. So there we go. 
And we cut backstage where Amy Wilbur is with Trisha Sky and doing all her. You know, Amy basically asks about, you know, are they ready to team? And, you know, Trisha steps in and says, look, me and Joni, we're not going to be best friends. We have respect for each other as competitors. And if European, European Union wants to get in the way and try to prove themselves, we're happy to team up tonight and shut them down. Because the sky's the limit, and I'm still going to be women's champion one way or the other. And Joni then says, Trish is right. Look, we have different ways of looking at life. But I'm still the next Evolution Women's Wrestling, and together, me and Trisha can't be stopped. So just a straight promo, putting over themselves, and putting over their big tag match later tonight, as this gets A78. And then we cut backstage where Chuck Long walks into Teddy's long's office and he basically says to Teddy, Okay, is that right? Did you just give Ray Jr. a rematch? Because what, like, I'm the champ, Teddy. You should be respecting me, not giving guys you want to be champion all sorts of other shots. And Teddy's like, look, Playa, you know I got the title was a little hinky. So I'm giving you a shot to shut everybody up. Next week, Ray Jr. Revolution, beat Ray Jr., and it's over. But hey, if you're scared of Ray Jr., maybe you should be more honest about that. And Fumble was like, no, I'm not scared of Ray Jr. It just makes me upset that you're not ready for me to be the face of the revolution, Teddy. Well, next week, Ray Jr., look, I was able, I was willing to move on now that I was champion. But fine, you want to keep on getting my business after next week? The reason you're not, never going to be world champion once again is you won't be able to get out of the hospital. And he walks away as Raven Rain does Raven Rain things in the background. 84, fun little segment, putting over the world title match next week right here on Revolution. Then we have ODB's official in-ring debut as a singles match, and she fights Ella Danger. And it's a bit of a, you know, wacky brawl, like Ella Danger, you know, does her stuff. ODB fights back. Back and forth match, and after a couple of minutes, ODB hits the whatever finisher is. I'll have to double check that. And, you know, gets the win, and perfectly clean win for ODB. You know, she's playing it for, you know, character and 56 perfectly solid mid card match odb gets a 48 ellie danger gets a 58 fun stuff but then as odb is celebrating ellie danger hits her from behind with the cane which of course she's you know gotten involved with before and the fight is on as a brawl to the back before the officials break them up and you know this fight is on and it looks like odb now has a little feud partner as this gets a 50 fun stuff and then we cut backstage where booker teaspool shilton benjamin and booker basically says which you got a big match tonight against Lee and Storm. And look, Kimmin and Storm, they're assholes, but they're talented assholes. So Seka, get out there and show why you're a high profit free agent and why you can make an impact here in WCW right here tonight by defeating a former US champion, uh, defeating a former TV champion, a former tag champion, and a top guy. Ron says like he's ready, and Booker says, no Seka, you can't be ready. You have to be ready to take action. And you have to be ready to kick some ass. Can you dig that? And Shelton says, yeah, I can. So they're ready, and we're going to match later tonight of Shelton Benjamin versus Lance Storm, building off the six-man from last week, as this gets a 75. And then we uh, cut backstage where Teddy Long walks in as he's talking to Captivation, and Lizzie basically says, look, Teddy, you know that Radcliffe and Vidal are paper champions. You put, us, they, you put them in the ring with real talent such as me, such, such as me and Alexi, a former women's champion, and we'll take those belts right off those women, just like that. We got rid of our dead weight, so just give us a chance and we can take them apart and give you women's world tag champions you can be proud of. He says, look, I'm proud of all the women on my roster, but hey, wanna challenge them? Fine. Next week, I'll talk to them, they'll, they'll, one of them will fight one of you, and have a big singles match right here on Revolution. The women agree, and we have a match for next week. And this gets a 67, fun stuff. Some bad rolls, but you know, rolling and setting things up. And then we have Emmy Wilbur backstage with Keenan Sharp, you know, but basically asked him about confronting Keith Walker last week in the fighting pit. And Keenan Sharp says, you have to understand, everybody will be walking on the path behind me sooner than later, Weber. Only when you accept that you need to be on the path and following me is when I will stop. And Keith Walker, he thinks because he's fought a few lunkheads and tatted up fighters who think they're something more than just guys who were fighting in brawl brawls a few years ago, that he's some sort of ultimate fighter. No, he's going to ring with a true practitioner of Muay Thai and various other martial arts. I can get that ring and I can take you apart and then 
not only will you walk the path, but so your manager, Tori Wilson, who also needs some guidance. And he's like, guidance? That seems a little weird to say about a woman. And Sharp says, see, that's what I mean. I do not a want any pleasures of the flesh from women such as Tori Wilson. I want to guide her on the correct path, as I want for everybody, including these idiots in the audience. Again, typical heel promo, setting up the feed with Walker and canoeing things as this gets an 81 salt stuff. Then we have our tag match as Poland and Dean Blanco, who I keep on forgetting have excellent chemistry team together. The problem is like Dean's so bad that even like excellent chemistry only gets them up to 51. Like maybe the Blanco of like a year or two ago, ago, this would have been a great little tag team doing the tag division, but it's too late for them now. As you know, back and forth match, you know, Monty Brown eventually, you know, fights with London, you know, push off the other that's been going on for the next past few weeks. Uh, Monty eventually hits the uh, big pounce on London, sending him to the outside. And that allows Sun Sunny Saki to hit a few big moves, including his finisher, and pin Dean Milenko right here on Revolution as they get a big win. Uh, overall, this gets a 70, goes a little under 7 minutes, Milenko gets a 51, Milenko gets an 86 because he's a great, Siaki gets a 49, Monty Brown gets a 79, and post-match, you know, Siaki just celebrates like he just won the world title and made it in Starcade, and Monty Brown just, you know, sort of shrugs his shoulder and walks away. 67, again, putting forward Siaki's character, and, you know, putting Monty over. And then, you know, we have the, you know, the crew of Storm, Harris, Slater, and Roxy, like, sort of leaving the arena, and then ODB, you know, comes out to join them, because, you know, she's a country girl just like them, I guess, and, you know, Amy Weber's trying to talk to them, and eventually, like, you know, Roxy, ODB, and even Slater, like, sort of talk Weber into coming her out the party, and he's like, no, I have a job, and she's like, eh, Teddy, you'll be fine. Teddy's fine. Come on. Come on with us. Come party. We're celebrating our victory tonight. We're celebrating Slater being back on the right path. And it'll be like, hey, I can kick some ass too. And there we go. Again, just sort of like a little goofy angle. And this gets a 53. Fun stuff. And then when Storm gets in the ring and says, if I can be serious for a minute, tonight, Sean Benjamin, you get the chance of a lifetime. You get to fight a fantastic wrestler from Calgary, Alberta, Canada, me. But unfortunately, you're not going to win because you may have a future, but you're not quite there yet. How come Shelton says, maybe I'm not ready, but there's no way to get ready except to get in that ring and fight. So you want to be serious? Fine. Let's get in that ring and fight. So Shelton's ready and the match is on and this gets a 69. Uh, you don't need to work a little bit. You know, these guys aren't the best mic workers, so sort of what I expect. And then they have a match and oof, okay. I mean, not bad. I, I, I keep on forgetting Shelton's not that over, so it's going to hurt his matches. Uh, but, you know, back and forth, fun match. Um, you know, Shelton does Shelton stuff, some suplexes, you know, taking him down with holds. Lance Storm gets reversals, tries locking submissions, hits some suplexes of Moan, uh, hits, you know, hits a Fisherman suplex for a near fall. There's some fighting, some super kicks, some, you know, uh, aside moonsaults, T bone suplexes. And eventually, you know, Shelton goes for the uh, springboard. Storm knocks him out with the super kick. Uh, Storm goes for the pinfall, one, two, three, and picks up the victory in a very good match, you know, which is very even, and even Shelton look, gets to look strong as he basically kicks out right at three, but the ref calls for the bell, and Lance Storm gets a victory here on Revolution. 74, uh, Shelton gets a 71, Lance Storm gets an 88, again, probably one of the most underpushed people, but, like, again, eh, what can you do? Anyway, 74, solid stuff. And then, of course, Billy Kim slides in, and the beatdown is on, Billy Kim until Booker T comes out for the save and chases off Kim and Storm, and this feud has to continue as it gets an 83. And then our little wacky sort uh, sh ah, show long storyline continues, as you know, basically everybody's partying, you know, and income uh, the social scene, um, you know, partying at this random country bar. You know, Nikki's there, Andy Vidal's there, um, Trevor Slater and ODB. Are getting close, which is interesting. You know, Amy Webber's Amy Weber is you know dancing again. This is just a goofy angle to get sort of people on TV, advance some characterization. You know, ODB gets to be her ODB character. So sort of gets to be the goofy you know cow. You know, his his goofy redneck. Uh, Nikki Radcliffe and Amy Vidal are you know sort of you know again social scene partiers and AMW. You know, sort of get to move forward. You know, they're sort of, you know, the, the ass kicking, your beer, beer drinking cowboys as well. 52, because, yeah, not 
the best, most over people, but this is just angle it, you know, I, I wanted to do. Anyway, then we get our raw recap, focusing on the big six main event, including Bill Goldberg's Spearing People, which gets a 73, and it's time for our main event. Which, okay, cool. I was praying for maybe a 90, but you know, this is what it is. Anyway, very, very good match. Like all four of these women, either through being in developmental or just getting better, are actually really solid in the ring. And that's sort of the match that they have is a very solid back and forth match. Four women fighting, you know, uh, Nikita Colt hitting suplexes, trying to lock people in. We see Nikita Busek taking advantage with her own European style, like, you know, uh, wrestling, you know, keeping people in holds. Waller does her brawling and power stuff, you know, hitting big boots, bending clotheslines. Uh, Trisha Sky, you know, does typical US pro style stuff, you know, uh, reversing holds, hitting suplexes of her own, hitting slams, you know, being a house of fire. Uh, you know, she she gets to play, you know, in the Southern Tag style, gets beat, beat down. Waller comes in as a hot tag late, throws people around, eventually skies back in, and eventually things break down. Pusik actually is able to toss Lawler uh, sort of over the top rope in sort of a modified uh, suplex. Uh, the battle's outside, and that makes skies just distracted enough for Nikita Colt to pick her up and hit a sort of like modified, I don't even know what it would be. I'd have to look at her finishers again. Sort of like probably some sort of like modified backbreaker slash, you know, drop which is called an icebreaker, which I even forgot I put in there. And she just drills it and rolls Sky over. And one, two, three, Nikita Colt has been the WCB Women's World Champion right here on Revolution. And that's the show. This gets an 87. Uh, Jordan Lawler gets a 79. This guy gets an 86. Student Music gets a 67. Nikita Colt gets a 73. Fun stuff, really good match. And overall, the show itself gets us an 80. Oof, okay. Not our best show. I guess because we didn't have like one standout like angle. I mean, I guess there was this stuff, which I guess I was hoping maybe I should have done Plumbo in a six minute angle. I also didn't have people like Styles or um, Hardys on the show. But hey, you know, could have been a lot worse, honestly. Um, but yeah, fun stuff there. Like I actually like, again, that was a very like wacky show as far as like booking goes, but I actually really enjoyed doing it because it was like something different. Um, Let's see here. Let's see how this loads up. We'll see if anybody was unhappy. I, I think my all my TV contracts are at least like low 80s. So there, should, there shouldn't be anything weird about that. And yeah, let's see what the survey says. Uh, ooh. Okay. I mean, this actually makes sense for 2005 AJ to go from high flyer to, you know, more like low level stuff. Um, let's see here. Scott Norton recovered. Anybody unhappy? Okay, Ray Jr. thinks. I mean, yeah, you're right. Shelton Benjamin will do well, do well in the future. Uh, Ronnie Jonah. I mean, yeah, I had to work. Okay, that makes sense. Anyway, um, so first, um, because I totally forgot to do one over Raw, is they did have Unforgiven, which got a 95. Um, of course, Randy and Fox were got 65,000. Anyway, let's go over the show. So they had. Um, pre-show matches that really don't matter. Okay, so we had Shaniqua Shini defeated Jamie Keys. Sort of a quick drop for Jamie Keys after she was women's champion. We had Molly Holiday defeating Elizabeth Love, Amber James, and Cherry Slice in an 82. We had Stephen Richards and the APA teaming up to take on Mark Henry and the Little Fellows in a 76. I mean, sure. Uh, DDP defeated Fit Finley by DQ. Uh, Taz won the WF European title. Which means I might have to go in and actually make sure Taz, like, yes, he should not be really wrestling. But hey, one year P title defeated Lion, Val Venus, and Jerry Sags in 71. Vampiro defeated Justice. So almost by accident, he continued the booking. Um, this got a 76. TNA won back the tag titles, unfortunately. Like, I might have to, like, break them up in game. Because otherwise, like, they're never going to, like, lose the tag titles, unfortunately. Um, then, we had in a big match. Batista, alongside Jim Cornette, win the Intercontinental title, defeating Christian and the champion Billy Gunn. This well, got an 86. Uh, Batista, yeah, Batista got an 87, which is interesting. Uh, we had Kurt Angle defeat Kane by DQ in a random 99. We had Taker defeat Will Rigo and Kristen Wall in a cage match in a random 98. We had Brock Lesnar and Edge defeat Jericho and Big Show by DQ in a random 100. Sure. Uh, yeah, I'm sure D a Matt DQ would get 100. Anyway, then Shawn Michaels defeated Scott Steiner in a dog collar match to retain the WF World Championship in a 99. So then they had Raw, which I showed you guys already. Then there was SmackDown. 
So SmackDown had Rikishi defeat Chains. Interesting. Steve Richards defeat Spike Dudley. Whole bunch of promos. Kane defeat Kane Squash Steve Bradley. Uh, let's see here. Scott Sander defeat Savio Vega. Billy Gunn defeat Justice in the Tables match. Funaki, Will and Regal and Taker defeat Christian in Streets of the Suburbs. So we had a tag match where Funaki, Will and Regal on the attacker defeat Christian, Homicide, and Spanky, which got a 90. What a world. Uh, then we had Benoit and Lesnar defeat Mark Henry and Val Venus in a Tables match, which got a 93. So yeah, some interesting stuff here. Um, then if we go to our dev fed, Wildside TV, not really much of note, honestly. Uh, yeah. Weekly House Show, let's see, anything? Not really. Um, yeah, again, I might, well, okay. So we have sort of an interesting team here. Again, nobody is really ready to be brought up uh, to, to the main roster quite yet. Um, yeah, I mean, I was, so one thing, I think I t mentioned this last week, is I did bring Matt Cross just to give him a vacation because he got chronic back pain, which means I wanted to bring him up to the main roster, but he's not quite ready. So I'll give him some TV time off and then bring him up, you know, as what I'm going to bring up as. Anyway, then we had America and Wrestling Queens, which had their weekly show, which had Tracy Taylor defeat Annette Blanchard, who's a regen. We had Michelle McCool defeat Carla Chambers, who's, not, who's another regen. We had Madison Eagles, Madison's Claire and Becky Bayless defeat Amazing Comp, which present Amy Zakura. We had Miss Molly defeat Cindy Rogers. And then we had Ariel defeat Minnesota Osaka in 72. Then they had Ladies Night, which had a Matt Singles defeat and that Blanchard. Uh, Becky Bayless defeat Carla Chambers. Tracy Taylor, Minnesota Osaka, and Michelle McCool defeat Portia Perez, Amazing Kong, and Emmy Circuit by Q. So yeah. Um, then we had Miss Molly defeat Cindy Rogers. And we had Ariel defeat Madison Sinclair to retain the NABQ title. And there's someone who I could maybe bring up, but honestly, my women's roster is currently basically full. Like, there are women who I want to do angles with that I just don't have time with at the moment. Um, so there's that. And then if we go to HWA, nothing really happened. Uh, Aaron Stevens versus Silas Young happened. Um, Mustafa Ali, who's I think like 17. No, 19. Okay. But he got signed, probably because... And no, because that's, I mean, that's probably a little high for where he was in 2006, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, let's see here, anything else really of note? Not really. Math Tracker and Excalibur are still here. Then I'll go to OVW. For the weekly loop, let's see here, what else show you guys? Um, Riptide defeat Elise Velez. Shaggy Dope and AD Douglas, the Insane Clown Naturals. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Miss Nashville defeat uh, Evelyn Chambers. Evelyn Chambers is a region, but she's getting there. Uh, Dan Jordan defeat Mitch Payne. And Denny Pewter, Trent Breaker was the main event. Then for their Saturday show, nothing really of note. Yeah, nothing really of note, honestly. So then, if we go to the rest of the wrestling world. Again, if we go back to last week, so um, MLW, which I went over. Let's see here. AWQ, which I showed you guys. Um, APW had a big show. Mike Moss versus Dawson Morgan. Max Justice was the main event. Let's see here. I think that's really it. PW was in the show. Profit versus Balls Mahoney. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, okay, so Zero One had a big show. Um, is there really anything of note? Not really. I mean, Akabona versus Tiger Mask 4. That's sure a match. Scott Norton versus Josh Barnett. Again, sure a match. Hidaka Tanaka would have been fun, but like, yeah, not really much of note there. Um, Guy had a big show again. Uh, Sonoko Kato versus Kuri Suzuki. Um, you know, Wakizawa defeating Karu. And Hakura Fukuda and Kiro Ito defeating Takeo Noe and Manayap Toyota. Really good matches, but like, you know, m not much new going on there. And uh, Iron had a big show. Michael Monas versus Donald Morgan. Super Dragon. And yeah, uh, 3CW. It existed. 
but yeah, sort of like not quite a dead period, but some like you know, WWE is doing what it's doing, we're doing what we're doing, and yeah, building things up. And again, um, that's for now. A little shorter video than usual. Honestly, I sort of I didn't have like any huge angles on either show, so that's probably like you know no long promos or anything. So that probably helped things out be a little bit shorter. But you know that is for it for now. Um, if you'd enjoy this, go ahead and give it a like. Comment below when you're liking, not liking, and subscribe to the channel for plenty of TW20 20 content like this. And hopefully I'll give you able to get my other series running along, but it's still nice out, so they still might be eyes for a little bit longer. Uh, but that's it for now. So talk to you later and adios. Have a good one.